hello and welcome to the Morning Minute. It's our very last day of the conference and our program. We have a wealth of exciting events as usual going on here at Women Deliver 2016. Today we talk about the importance of young people in driving change. In the studio with me, I have two young, passionate Women Deliver advocates. Yamurai Nyoni, a Zimbabwean social sector entrepreneur, HIV AIDS activist and passionate opponent of child marriage, and UK government evening scholar Unami Mwatsui from Botswana. A very good morning to you both and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Morning thank you to me. Much. I'm going to start with Yamurai. <laughs> I've noticed you've <laughs> literally been the rock star of this conference. Yeah. What is it about your message, Yamurai, that you think is able to capture people's attention that is really resonating with them? Uh, well, first of all, just uh, I think to thank everyone for the tweets, the retweets and every conversation I've had during the conference. It's been overwhelming. Uh, but I think one thing for me has just been the honesty and just um, the truth around the world that we live in and being able just to talk about it and be open about it. Uh, so just that one statement to say my strength does not depend on the weakness of others. Um, just it changed people's minds and made people see more about why the world is unjust and why inequality exists. So basically saying young people are owning the problem, it's not predetermined by the response of those before them. Yes, I mean, um, sometimes I think we give too much weight and value to harmful cultural norms and traditions and we forget the power we have to change them. So being young people in this space is meant we're able to, to articulate and say and speak to the future that we want to live in and speak to the present that we are trying to uh, make sure is, 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 is possible and is, is, is um, 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 happening the way that we expect. Mm. So, well, Naomi, let's talk about what uh, Yamurai is saying, but I'm yeah. thinking the picture is probably slightly different from, for you yeah. being uh, a, a young woman. We've been talking about gender parity. So yeah. what are the challenges in, in getting um, authority structures to listen to you but also your peers to 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 stay on course with you i uh, thank you very much Tippi. so i think what we need more as young women is opportunity to speak to our issues because we are best placed uh, to be the people who are in the design process of what kind of programs work for us the whole emphasis of data on this conference was very significant it is something that we have been lagging behind in because most of the programs and projects that we've been having and policies were not informed by data so right now i feel that we need to have more than just a seat at the table. Mm. We need the voice at the table. And beyond the voice, we also need our voice to be taken into consideration, into action, into implementation. Because there's a difference between a person just coming on stage and saying, okay, this is what we're looking for, this is what we're saying, and then you discard what they said. So we need to be seeing more presence and more Let's um, talk about being seen and presence. You're wearing a blue ribbon, and yeah. I understand that's of great significance. Yeah. That's a conversation that's taking place in Botswana now? For a long time, um, there has been a lot of uh, sexual violence, physical violence, domestic violence going on in our country that we have kept quiet about. Everything has always been pushed under the rug. If a child, for example, is, is exposed to some sort of sexual harassment, sexual violence, it was kept within the family sphere. We could not talk about it in public. Right now, as we stand today, as progressive as Botswana is, we have two in three women who are experiencing gender-based violence. Two in three women. That's a lot mm. for a But country, in, in terms um, of that, I believe it has to do with a figure of authority, a minister. Yes, Tell us uh, yes, just yes. very briefly right about now, that. Right what, now, what is currently happening, there's a discussion, there's action being taken in Botswana with consent to um, uh, fighting against uh, uh, sexual exploitation and sexual abuse of children, especially the girl child. We have this blue ribbon campaign, which is, uh, you can find it all over social media with a hashtag, I shall not forget, because we had an experience where a young 16-year-old girl was found to be sexually exploited by someone who is in uh, a position of authority. So we are coming out as men and women in our country to say no more. We need our duty bearers to take accountability. It's not about this issue on its own. It's about unraveling the many issues mm. that have been pushed under the rug over the years. So we are now standing up and saying we need to do something about this issue. Yeah, I'm right. Just 
to come back to the conference, to come back to post the conference, this issue of sexual violence against women. Men play a very important role yep. in bringing that to an end. And as a young man, how do you change the thinking of other young men to say young women are not fair game? If a young woman is out partying and she's drunk or tipsy, she's not fair game. If a young woman is dressed in a particular way, she's not fair game. How do we bring an end to that? Uh, I think the first thing for us is to be, or to talk, to talk openly about issues of sexual reproductive health and rights, uh, to talk specifically about gender-based violence. We really have these conversations, especially as young men. So I think it's important for us to sit down and talk to each other um, and get to understand the world we live in and the part that we're playing in the injustice and inequality that exists. I think one of the questions we always have to ask ourselves as young men is what are the privileges that we enjoy? and at whose expense do we enjoy these privileges. And to be honest with ourselves and take responsibility for letting go of these privileges to allow, first of all, for women and girls to be able to exist in an environment that's safe, uh, that's secure, and that respects their agency. So I think it's conversation and um, also taking responsibility personally. I have to ask myself difficult questions because I also may be contributing to um, an environment that doesn't support the rights mm. of women. Final question to you, Onami. The reality is that when we talk about agency of young women and women in general, that goes alongside rights. And sometimes women take their rights to a certain extent. So how do we balance the two? And I'm talking about young girls who may be a little bit more precocious. The reality is that while uh, sexual-based violence is per perpetuated by men, women also play a role. I think... Um the most important thing we need to understand is that the clothes that the young woman is wearing is not an invitation to say, I want to have sex. We are never asking for it. And most of the time we find that we have all these uh, policies and structures and rights in place, but people don't respect that. They don't treat women as human beings. So we just want to be treated as human beings, not that more, not that, um, we are anything less than the other person. So it's when, in most cases, you'd find that when somebody is sexually abused or violated, it's always somebody's daughter, mm. somebody's aunt, somebody's this. But what about me as a person? As I'm an individual. Someone, yes. Unami uh, Mwadzwi and yeah. Yamurai Nyoni, thank you to you both. Uh, the conversation, of course, continues. We still have a lot going on in the studio in this uh, very exciting last day of the conference. In a moment, we'll be talking about uh, non communicable diseases and gestational diabetes with Indian gynecologist Hema uh, Divaka and our last candid conversation. Family planning is the term helping or hurting progress, featuring Dennis Walker, President Pronto International, human rights lawyer Nyarazai Gumbozwana and YWCA in Zimbabwe, as well as uh, Shruti Chandras Karan, Associate Director, Increasing Diversity by Increasing Access from India. We'll also have a debate on gestational diabetes with Dr. Hima Davika. And of course, our last uh, act of the day, the great closing plenary that will focus on the way forward after Women Deliver 2016. We have Women Deliver viewing parties across the world again today in Bangkok, Port Moresby, Nairobi, Freetown, Bethlehem, Kampala and New York. Hello to you all. I hope you keep delivering. For our entire schedule, go to hashtag WD2016. Bye bye for now. Thanks for joining us.